Welcome to The Rebellious Investor, the podcast that cuts through all the noise surrounding investing, property, mindset, and building your successful life. Let's get into it. Well, here we are, Rebellious Investor, Matt. How are you doing this morning? Ray, I'm very, very well, thank you. Episode numero uno. Big number one. Yeah, looking forward to yeah exploring what the Rebellious Investor is and then just explaining to our listeners how we came to be here, sitting at this table, delivering this podcast. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. So, Raymond. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your backstory. Why don't you tell it? No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard it a few times. <laughs> Oh, well, let's get the boring stuff out of the way. So, you know, my background is property and law and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I guess the, the important part of my story is the five year stint that I spent over in India, where um, I went to India for like three months uh, with my family, with my wife and my two kids, uh, to help with a particular project over there around an idea of a village for the poor. And spent three years traveling around, doing a lot of research and learning because I'd never done that kind of stuff before. And um, at the end of that, came back to Australia, wrote a report and some suggestions and recommendations, and then got invited to go back to kind of be involved in leading that project moving forward. And spent nearly five years living in India. And it's during that period that really reshaped my thinking, my attitude towards life, towards business, how I do things. Yeah, so as part of that, I was invited over to yes. India by you to do some uh, motorbike riding through the Himalayas, one of the best things I've done. But the cultural difference between being an Aussie, living in Australia, and then landing in Delhi and just <laughs> seeing the volume of people, yeah. uh, it is really different. So mate, how did you go with the, the cultural differences when you first landed? You know, it's one of the, it's, it, it's one of the lessons that I actually learned about just conforming because things over there are so different. And the, one of my good friends from, um, from overseas said to me, Ray, um, one of the challenges, if you compare the difference, you won't like it. If you say, oh, this is not the way we do in Australia, this is how we do things. But when you embrace a difference and just understand that difference is just different, doesn't mean it's one's better or worse. Um, it allows you to adjust. But that's where I learned that conforming is so easy to do. One of the things you're doing um, when you're driving in the streets of Delhi, and yes, I drove in the chaos of the Delhi streets, um, is they all blast their horn. Now, when they blast their horn, it's not an aggressive thing. Like, if somebody blasted a horn here to me in Australia, I'd be like, dude, what are you doing? You know, it's very rude. We're over there, it's just letting people know that you're there. And so, when I first started driving, people were blasting me. I'm like, looking at them, what the heck? Getting out of my car, what are you, you know, what are you blasting the horn at me for? And then realize, well, hang on, that's not what it's about. And then very soon, I'm doing the same thing, where I drive, with my elbow on the steering wheel, always blasting. But the problem is when I come back to Australia and I'd come back quite a bit over that five year period, I do the same thing. And then next minute I'm getting into trouble over here in Australia because people are looking at me like I've done something wrong. Yeah, we don't like uh, having the horn beeped at us when we're driving, the no. Aussies. No, we don't at all. Um, when I first arrived, the only thing that I can compare Indian traffic is like flowing water. <laughs> And it just moves. You're not sure how it moves, but just with momentum, it just keeps going. Yep. And then there's no actual middle line. There's no lanes. You just you it just flows either way. So yeah, it's very very interesting. Um, yeah. So that was a that was a. But it was, was so cool that we got to experience some of that together too. Because like you said, when you came over to India, um, it was for us to go up to the Himalayas. So we went up to we flew up to oh we rode the motorbikes from Delhi, Delhi yeah. all the way up to Leh Ladakh. Yeah. And what an experience they've had. And I guess that's where you and I really formed a much stronger bond. We knew each other before that, but it was on that trip where there was a kindred spirit. Yeah, yeah. I guess well, we get to spend a lot of time, like up, up in the Himalayas, there's no power. There's no, <laughs> there's no iPhones and things like that. So, you know, you just spend a lot of time just talking about things. And that's yep. where you and I really discovered that we had a lot of things in common. A lot of our philosophies of life, yep. a lot of our values as well yep. around, around family um, and you know, how we want to live our lives Absolutely. really came through. Yep. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a very, very uh, interesting trip. One of the stand up parts of it for me was when you and I went for a swim in that icy, you know, glacier, cold water 
How and, funny was that? Oh. I just saw a waterfall up on this hill. We just rode it, rode uh, down into a valley in this little um, town, and I just saw this beautiful waterfall. But above that waterfall is a mountain with snow. I said to Ray, it's probably about a 150 meter walk up there. I said, mate, I'm going to go up into that waterfall and I'm going to so jump you, into mate. that water. And he's like, no, 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 no. I said, no, nah, I'm going to do it. I'm all the way here in India. This is going to be great. And up we trekked, and then oh. a few people followed us. Yes. Yep. Yep. And uh, that was actually the Rotung, Rotung Pass. So you've come across from a place called Manali. You're going over the Rotung Pass, which is one of the first passes before you start getting to even higher passes as you climb up towards Lay of the Dark. And it's one of the most dangerous roads. A lot of accidents happen on that particular highway. And I'm glad that, you know, I don't tell my wife everything that I do because I don't want her to worry. But that's where roll, uh, cars roll quite regularly. People just disappear. And when we came in the other, over the other side is when you looked up and you saw that waterfall um, and you decided that you wanted to climb. And I'm like, oh gosh, there's, there are more waterfalls coming. I don't need to climb this 150 meters, but there you go, off you go. And then we're like, bang, off we went. And it was great. And, and you being the protective soul that you are, yes. followed me up, yep. made sure that I didn't Make sure that Mr. kill Brown myself. Is all okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it absolutely took my breath away. The view and the icy cold water. Yeah. And I guess that's where we really started to sort of think about or get an understanding of each other. And then from that point, we then started discussing a couple of different businesses that yeah. we were thinking about being involved in. And um, like most things, you didn't jump right in, completely different to myself. Yes. I'm always a head first, straight in, and we'll deal with the consequences as we uh, go <laughs> on. So actually working alongside you has really balanced that for me, which is great. Um, and yeah, so over that time we've, we've been working together. That was, ten, that was, was back that in 2018, you know, 15, 15, I think. A long time ago. A long time ago. Quite a while um, ago. Great. Yeah, it was a, it was a very good trip. That's right. It was just after, uh, Orlando, Orlando. was born. Yes. Yeah. My son. Yeah. So the rebellious investor. Yeah. What is a rebellious investor to you? Well, I guess, you know, like, like we've just been sharing, Matt, it's, our approach, uh, the way we approach a lot of different things that we do in life that, um, and as I was mentioning before about the whole idea of conforming, for me, um, it's so easy to do just to want to fit in, to, to go along with the herd, and, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's the best thing for you. It may be the most comfortable thing for you, um, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best. And I guess that's our approach and our attitude. So it's not about being different just for the sake of being different, but it's about challenging existing paradigms, challenging the, the way things are currently being done, trying to do things smarter, use things that are at your disposal. So in today's marketplace, especially when it comes to investment, there are so many different things available. Yeah, there are. There's so much information out yes. there. Where do you go to actually learn? Yeah. Yeah. What trusted resources can you utilize um, to actually then go out and build your own investment strategy and implement that for you long time? But it's just not about investment. When I think about um, living a rebellious life, it's not necessarily I'm not adhering to the laws and the rules, but it's really just about living what laws. Life. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> it's really about <laughs> it's really about living life on your terms. Yeah. And part of that is really just figuring out who you are, a big piece. what you Massive want, piece. yeah, what you want, and then putting together a, a strategy of how you're going to go go and do that. Yeah. Um, and you know, uh, over the over the last sort of, sort of ten years, I have transformed from that uh, suit and tie wearing financial advisor to the board short at singlet and thongs. <laughs> financial advisor <laughs> and a lot of people when they see us they they don't pick that we uh that we work uh in finance um a lot of people don't actually don't think we work at all well that's by design <laughs> The whole, the whole idea is that we work the minimum amount that we need to, no, to we achieve. Work hard. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, anyway. Um, so yeah, so that, that's the whole idea, is that you need to be able to identify who you are and then work out what you want and then go out there and get that. And I yep. think um, you don't need to adhere to the tried and tested way that our forebearers have done things. Yeah. And then, so that's what this podcast is going to be all about. It's going to be about really identifying, you know, how or the different ways or opportunities that you can design your life. And the flavor it is going to be around creating success in your life through achieving time freedom through financial security. And then 
unpacking what that means to us, unpacking what that means with our guests. Uh, and Ray and I are going to be the hosts here, but we're going to be inviting on a lot of guests over the time that are going to be a lot smarter than what we are <laughs> and be able to share their stories along the way. Yeah, and I think that's the exactly what you just said, Matt. So it's not just about, we're not just talking about how to invest, you know, and, and yes, we'll definitely touch on a lot of that stuff. For example, like I think the Financial Planning Association just came up with a recent survey and um, that millennial crowd are utilizing a lot more these days digital platforms in order to help them on their investment journey. And we'll explore a lot of those different platforms different things on how, different tools, uh, different ways that you can access certain markets and how you can invest, for example, that might be non-traditional, that might be um, not the, 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 the way that everybody else is currently playing that, but we're also going to be unpacking a whole lot more because um, for to, to be a successful investor, it always comes back to switching on the right thinking, the right mindset, how you approach it, you know? And, and that's one of the things that I've learned in my life in that, you know, when I got into property, even before I started, uh, even before I did my first property deal, I started picturing myself as a property boss, as a property entrepreneur, as a property player. I hadn't done anything yet, but I started investing in myself to switch on that right thinking so that I could see that in myself and that helped me, you know, um, get the first couple of deals across the line. And so we're going to be unpacking a whole lot of that kind of stuff um, during the course of the podcast. Yeah, and like mindset is such a huge uh, tool that people can use to really accelerate every aspect of their life. Um, because we are who we think we are and we control our thoughts. So um, it's really important to get an understanding of how you can do that and pre-frame how your day is going to be. So I know that you, know, you and I, we both sort of have a morning ritual, we get up and we frame our day. And most days I have a pretty good day because I have set my intention for that to happen. Yeah. And there are just some little tricks and tips and tools that, that we've sort of discovered over our Short lives thus far, yep. medium length lives. And mm. um, we're going to be sharing that with all of our listeners. Some of it's going to be nuggets of gold for you. Some of it you're just going to pass over. And that, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Because, you know, even us, even though we're really good friends, we're in business together, we do life really differently as well. Absolutely. And yeah, and that's, yep. what, that's what we really want to uh, empower uh, all of you listeners to actually go out and strive to, you know, thrive in life. Yeah, that's good, man. Love it. So Matt, I kind of just assumed that you would have naturally weaved into the conversation your backstory. You do know that I love talking about myself. Yes. Why, don't, why don't you share with our uh, listeners a little bit about yourself, mate? Okay, so uh, my background is in uh, education. Yeah. Uh, so I was a PE teacher for a little while. Does that um, mean you're fit? I used to be fit, <laughs> yes. Now I'm just rocking the dad bod, <laughs> rocking the dad bod, you know, trying to keep up with the youngsters. Oh, but, you keep uh, up well. Yeah. yeah. So, um, teacher, um, but I remember back when I was uh, at Teachers College, I was more interested in um, how to make money, or at least as interested as I was about learning to be a teacher. And I always remember when I was teaching all of my periods off or time after school of me actually teaching, I was um, just engrossing myself in all of those rich dad, poor dad teachings that were all coming out. Uh, at that particular time in the late 90s. So that's, a, that's what, where I started in teaching. Then I transitioned across into mortgage broking. I was a, held a mortgage broking qualification for about 15 years where I assisted uh, clients build sophisticated property portfolios. So show, it was showing mums and dads how mm. to buy and set up investment portfolios uh, of property and how to structure their loans correctly. So I did that. Then through that journey, I really loved um, the investing side. And I thought, well, as a mortgage broker, I can't really talk about the breadth of, of investing environment. And that's when I decided to go out and, and continue my education and become a financial advisor. And I've been a financial advisor since 2008. I think I got qualified in July, so just before the crash. So it was a very interesting time to commence being a financial <laughs> advisor. The financial world was literally falling around all of us. Yeah. So yeah, I've done that. I'm still a financial advisor myself, been, uh, and I've been pretty much self-employed since I was sort of 25, 26 years old. So um, I would find it, I think, very difficult to go and work for somebody else. So I'm mm. very self-directed, as you are. Um, yeah, and then uh, I also really uh, enjoy 
coaching businesses uh, on how to implement profit first strategies into their cash flow and into their businesses so that they can increase profits and ultimately then drive those profits into a wealth creation strategy. So that's my, self, that's my sort of backstory just quickly. Um, but you know, that's I guess what I do or what I've done for work career, career wise. Um, but the most important role that I play is uh, as a father to my two young uh, princes and by no means does that mean I'm a king. <laughs> my wife is a queen. Big daddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, 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 you know, uh, loving my, my beautiful wife. So th that's really my highest value. And it, was, it wasn't really until I got some personal coaching that I really established that for myself. So what I would really strongly recommend all of our listeners to go out and do is to work out what are their five core values. Um, there's plenty of information on the intrawebs where they can uh, look that up and go through a process, but really identify what are the most important values are to you um, and then build values based goals. Because what my coach uh, exercise that she had me do, uh, thank you, Victoria Mills, was uh, sit down and actually work out what my core values were and then look at my diary and see how much time I was allocating to those. So families at the very high end, or at the very top of my, my values, and I was spending only one day a week with them and pretty much working, getting up early in the morning, getting home late at night, not spending a lot of time with my young family at that particular stage. And I was living incongruently to my values. And what that was doing, it was, I was self-sabotaging myself, mm. yeah? Um, and you know, if you want to live a thriving, successful life, self-sabotaging is not the way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> makes, makes it harder. That's yeah, sure. definitely. So then what I started to do was I then put into my diary priority events that I was having with my children. So taking my kids to swimming lessons, going for long walks on the beach, <laughs> these yeah. types of things and these moments, because like as a father, you know, these moments are fleeting. Your children are so young for such a short period of time. Like my youngest literally turns uh, seven tomorrow. Um, and I'm now really fortunate that I can basically just take tomorrow off yeah. and spend that time uh, with the whole family doing whatever it is that, uh, that he wants to do. So I'm very, very fortunate to have been able to build a life that gives me that sort of flexibility. Um, and I would encourage everybody to design the life that they love living. Yeah. You know, you shouldn't be trying to slave away Monday to Friday to just get in those Saturday and Sunday time. You should hopefully be able to wake up every day revitalized, looking forward to getting after every single day. Yeah. You'd had some previous experience uh, in life in, de in dealing with a coach. So you have an understanding of really what a, what a coach can do for you. Because obviously um, a while ago, you used to play what? Very high level soccer. Yeah, so I did play uh, soccer, yeah, yes, football, um, football it, soccer, yeah, yeah no, I yeah. was, yeah, so as a, as, a, as a youngster, that's what led me into becoming a yeah. PE teacher, yeah. um, I was, soccer was all encompassing for me, um, I loved playing, um, I was by no means the best, but I uh, just had a passion for it, and I really, um, it was ever, winning uh, was everything, and as you know, it still is very important to me <laughs> to win <laughs> in everything that I do. Yeah. It's just part of my uh, makeup. Um, but yeah, dealing with, with a coach at that particular stage is very interesting. My, another great story was when um, my dad actually took me out of a, a, a winning soccer team, my early teens, and played me up a year, so all in an older team. Um, and it was the first time I, 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 he was an amazing coach at that, at that time, a lot of skill development for me, but it was the first time I played in a team that wasn't, you know, minor premier winning uh, soccer team. And um, I learned a lot uh, in that particular year. I think I was about 12 or 13, I think I was 12 or 13, yeah. Very humbling experience to run onto a soccer pitch and um, get beaten, like week in, week out, very, very humbling. Um, but that also taught me a lot about myself and then also uh, how to, I guess, be um, a leader to the, the other players because when you're, when, you're, when, when you're not winning all the time and you're playing for, for fun, but also it's, it's important that you have this other goal or that you still have that camaraderie uh, in, in that mm. team. And my coach at that particular time was, was really good. So yeah, my soccer career, fizzled out around uh, in my early early 20s and that was also when I then started focusing well I had to make a decision 
Um, it was either continue to play so a soccer, um, which took up a lot of time in the evenings and on the weekend, or pursue my mortgage broken career, which that also took up a lot of time in the evenings and on the weekends. Um, and I opted for the latter, as uh, that is where I could foresee the money coming in so I could uh, start to build my life. And I didn't really understand at that particular stage that you know finance is a foundation of your entire life. Mm. You, you really have to, like we like to say, get your shit sorted yep. um, around all of your cash flow and financing because money isn't the be all and end all. Um, it's not going, you can't buy happiness but you can uh, buy experiences or well, that then make you happy or money allows you to buy time. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if we, if we had the choice of all the money in the world or all the time in the world, we would pick all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and, and having that time and flexibility is just so, so important. Yes. Very good. Yeah. Well, I, I think, you know, um, hopefully, our listeners have got a bit more of an idea of who you are, what makes you tick. Um, what are some of the, I guess as we start to wrap up this particular episode, maybe just leaving our listeners with a couple of um, our own personal life lessons that will really shape how we're going to unpack this podcast moving forward. What, you got any that you wanna just throw up in the, <laughs> throw on the table, man, putting you on the spot? Throwing me straight in the deep end. <laughs> um, well, I guess the, the first one which I already mentioned was to really have uh, identify your values. Yeah. Um, also, get an understanding of your personality. So it was only until really recently that I did a Gallup Strength Finders test, um, which then really um, gave, gave me a lot of insight into my uh, personality. When I read those descriptions, I was like, ah, oh, that is 100% me. Woo, wow. Uh. <laughs> yes, I love to be loved. <laughs> um, but it also, if I had known um, some of those characteristics, I probably would have gone into a sales type role, um, well, I guess that's why it makes me a good teacher as well. I'm a very, I, I love being around people and, and having those interpersonal relationships. Um, so those base goals, um, identify like who you are and then where you're trying to go. Uh, you know, a great saying is, you know, if you don't, if you're not aiming the arrow at a certain target, you're never going to hit it. Yeah. Um, and I think too many people meander through life. They just sort of just grind out. Hope. Yeah. the nine to five, um, trying to get some fun in on the weekends, where I think I would challenge people to try and build the life that they love to live. Mm. Um, it's, not, it's not easy, no. but, 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 it, but it's worth it. Yep. And I think in life, you know, a lot of the things that aren't easy are actually the most rewarding. Um, yeah, I think they're the two tidbits that I've got for the time being. Yeah, good. How about you, mate? Any insight? Yeah, I guess some of my, my philosophy, my approach to doing things, like I mentioned before, um, a lot of those uh, were reshaped during my time in India. A big one is uh, just not conforming. And I'm a big one for that. And just just not trying to fit in uh, because we're that because that's comfortable. But be, be getting comfortable with being uncomfortable, that gap space, because that's where stuff really happens. That's where life really gets exciting. It's uncertain, it's chaotic, but good stuff happens in that space. So don't be afraid to step in to that space. Um, the other one too is all around identity. And one of the things I really learned when I was working with very, very destitute communities over in India was that you can give them all the tools, and in, in a lot of instances, it required multiple interventions to try and break a generational cycle of poverty. But despite giving them all the tools, unless they saw themselves differently, in other words, unless they, they, they looked at themselves say, and not saying to themselves, this is just my lot in life, this is what I deserve, unless you could break that identity crisis, um, the tools weren't gonna make, weren't gonna have any effect. And I think that's so powerful and important for us today too, that unless we understand who we really are, and like you said, understand what your strengths are, understand what makes you tick, understand your values, and the difference between aspirations and values, because values are stuff that you actually live out. Um, th that is such an important part of um, building the right foundation to be able to accelerate and move forward in life. And the last one is, uh, you know, a success story is all about making progress. No matter how small, so long as you are moving in the right direction. The, the compelling story that you've crafted for yourself, it has to be compelling because that'll help you 
make the sacrifices, go through the hard yards and stuff that's required. But it's about making progress towards that compelling story. You will find that in life, you will feel a whole lot better if you feel that you are making progress towards that story that you've crafted for yourself. Even if it's just baby steps. Yep, but you will not be satisfied. You'll be frustrated with life if you're going away from that story that you've crafted yourself. So make progress, no matter how small, but make progress. And then again, sometimes you have to take two steps backwards to then reframe things, to then go forwards again. So don't let failure um, or, or potential failure stop you from doing something. Or be afraid of it. Or be afraid yeah. of it, yeah. So I don't look at things as failures. I think I definitely look lessons. at it as, as lessons. Yeah. yeah, so when, like, <laughs> Um, I am the master at making mistakes. <laughs> so, but the thing is, is that you need to then analyze that, look at what you could have potentially done better and then learn. Yep. And don't, you know, keep repeating the same mistakes um, yeah. over and over again. That is stupidity. Uh, the other one tip I would probably give our listeners is to become a reader. Um, so much of the things that I've learned in life is from people who have lived hundreds of years ago. Mm. from listening to their stories, reading, or l reading their biographies, you know, learning from uh, these, these men and standing on the shoulders of these you know, amazing people and, and women, uh, people. So yeah, become a reader. If you don't love reading, um, then listen to books. So either use Kindle or Audible or a paper book, whatever it is. And yeah, just really allocate time every day to read. Cut back on the Netflix a tad. <laughs> A little bit more reading. Um, it, it definitely, when I started uh, making, uh, my intention was to, to read more. Um, yeah, definitely, that was a gear shift for me as well. Yeah, and and and, it, and if you you you're, you're um you, um don't have enough time, find some hacks. Like you know the one that I love to use, which is Blinklist. Yeah. Yep. It's a little app you put on your phone, and it cuts down a whole book into ten blinks, and you can digest a whole lot of key takeaways very, very quickly. So, you know, like I think so far I've read like 250 books this year, which I wouldn't have been able to have done uh, if I was to read them all the way through. But what it does for me is it highlights, hey, you know what, this particular book, I'm actually gonna get the full book and I'm gonna actually spend some time, you know, really digging into it deeper. Yeah, yeah, but, but, um, but getting some key takeaways. We, we both use that and it really just summarizes the book, gives you those golden nuggets yeah. that they think are in there. And then if you wanna then unpack that further, yeah. you can then delve into that book and um, yeah, get the full, full story. So yeah, that's a great uh, little tip. Well, Raymond, episode numero uh, uno. We made it. It's a wrap. <laughs> Thank you everyone for listening this far and we will catch up with you soon. Yeah, thanks. Bye now. Cheerio. Remember, this podcast is not personal advice, but meant for educational and entertainment purposes only. Each host and any guests are providing their own personal opinion and is not providing professional, financial, or any advice. The material provided does not constitute financial, tax, investment, or legal advice. For more details, please review our full disclaimer located on our podcast website. Wow, that was a mouthful, but we got there. Speak to you soon. Matt Brown coming at you.